Hi everyone, Chad here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today I wanted to do another instruction video and we're going to tackle the watch instruction this time. So the watch instruction is super powerful. You can use it to unlock a lot of the functionality of Unicorn. In my opinion, it is one of the most useful instructions in the entire uh, catalog of, in of instructions available. It is a conditional instruction, so uh, you might call it an if-then instruction, right? If one thing happens, then I want you to do this other thing. You can use watch instructions to do a whole bunch of stuff. So you can use them to collect fractions for you, to equilibrate a column, or to signal that loading is finished. You can use them to integrate multiple signals together. Uh, you can differentiate between two very close peaks. And you can even have the watch instruction alert you that uh, a specific condition has been met. And really, you can use uh, watch instructions to do a thousand other things. One of the most important things about watch instruction is that they have two rules. The first is that watch instructions will remain in effect until con a condition is met or it is turned off or the run ends. And this is important just because uh, it can have unintended consequences like later on down with your run. And I'm gonna show you guys a specific example of what I mean about that. The other important rule is that watch conditions are completely separate from each other. You can have multiple um, watch conditions present at the same time. So you can have one for UV and one for conductivity. And unless you nest one inside of the other, they, they won't interfere with each other so to demonstrate how you can actually use watch instructions and put them into your method i thought we would use this desalting run that i've been doing a little bit lately and um, i just want to point out some basic things um, for this particular result and then we'll move on to the actual method so the first thing is i'm using a desalting 2610 column and this is a very you know like common column that you see in a lot of labs you can order it from cytiva um, and then next thing I wanted to point out is that this UV signal right here in blue has, um, it goes up to about 350, 375, right? And I'm collecting two fractions, A1 and A2. I'm using peak fractionation when I do this. And I start collecting the fraction with 50 milliabsorbance units. So that's where we're going to get 50 from when we put in the watch instruction. I'm separating my favorite protein here from a conductivity peak, right? And I finished this one in about five minutes, okay? Plus or minus a little bit. So this is a pretty short uh, run. Okay, so let's go and look at the actual method. All right, so here's the method. Um, before we get too deep into it, I just wanna say that I'm assuming you know a little bit about reading uh, unicorn instructions. If you don't, that's fine. I have some videos you can watch. I'll link those below um, and you can watch them and then come back and you'll do great. Um, if you know just a little bit about reading unicorn instructions, um, you'll do fine here. This is a very basic method. Um, the other thing I want to say is that uh, this method currently has no watch instructions in it and I will post the uh, you know completed method uh, below so you can like really pick through the you know, where I placed the, each of the instructions and whatnot, if you want. Okay, so this method has six phases. The first is a method settings, and then we have a system flush, and then we have a column equilibration. The column equilibration, right now I have it set to zero CVs because like the column's already equilibrated. And then I am loading the sample using the sample pump. And you'll notice here that I am not using any air sensors or anything. So it's currently, it's just loading 15 mils and then stopping and it's gonna move forward. All right, then we reset the system, not really important to look at. And then the final is we do an actual desalting phase. So here is where I'm using the peak fractionation to collect my fractions. And this is where we're gonna start today is fraction collection. So uh, first let's just delete these. So why would we even want to use watch instructions like this? Well, for fractionation, we could use a bunch of tubes, which could be wasteful. But if we're going to be collecting the same fraction over and over again in multiple runs, we could collect it all in a single bottle, which would be really convenient. 
Okay, so we're gonna go to the actual watch instruction, which is here under, get this, watch, All right? And the first thing that comes up is this, we have to fill out these four fields right here. So the first one is UV, that's what we want, but we can select any of these possible options here, like conductivity or pH, I'll just stick with UV. And then there's a test. And so um, this is the if part. So if the UV goes greater than, but we could use, you know, peak max or less than or stable signal. But we're just going to go with greater than and then a value. So we said we're going to do 50 milliabsorbance units. And I could set this as a variable if I want, but I'm not going to. Just save some time. And then here is the action. So there are some predetermined actions. Method flow rate is an actual block, but the rest of these are all predetermined actions. So that Unicorn just gives you right away. Um, and one of them and block we're gonna use, but for right now, I'm not gonna use any of those. And I'm just gonna type here. And what that does is it's gonna create a block for us. So I'm gonna do, when I hit insert, it's gonna create that block for us. And inside this, I can do anything I want. So I could issue any of the instructions that are available in Unicorn. And I hope like that's like kind of a light bulb moment. You realize like all the functionality that um, the watch instruction, you know, kind of opens up to you just by creating a block that way. And the instruction we're going to use is a flow path instruction. We're just going to do outlet valve and we're going to do set it to one and we're going to hit insert. And so this is how we start collecting the fraction. So now we want to stop collecting the fraction. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to nest the another watch instruction inside of the other one. So we're going to go to watch and we're going to fill out these again. We're going to do the signal is going to be UV, but this time the test is going to be less than. And we're going to select the same UV signal if we want. And we're going to type in another action, which is going to be a new block. Okay, so now inside of this new block, we're gonna do another flow path instruction and it's gonna be outlet valve. And we're just gonna do select, position is gonna be outlet to waste. Okay, there you go. So we'd start collecting a fraction, um, send the outlet valve to position one, and then we would watch till the UV goes below 50 and then we'll change the outlet valve to waste. I like to put, let me, let me minimize this. I like to put a delay block between this outlet valve and the UV. And the reason I like to do that is sometimes when the valve changes, there's like a little, little wobble in the UV signal. So let me put the delay in here. Okay, so that's one watch instruction. Let's look at making another one. And the other one we're gonna do is, I think is equally important, is to signal that loading is complete. And so here, um, right after the sample flow instruction, but before the end block instruction is where we want to insert the instruction. So let's go to watch. And this time, the signal is going to be the air sensor for the sample inlet, then the test is gonna be equals. So equals what? Either no air or air. So we're gonna select air, and the action is going to be a one of the predetermined ones. We're gonna select um, end block right here. And so when we hit insert here, it's actually not going to create a block. So let's see, there we go, watch. And so what this means is that, um, right after we read this in this phase, right, we're gonna start loading um, the sample onto the column and we're gonna wait for 15 mils. But if let's say at 13 mils, the air sensor tripped, right? Well, that is going to indicate this watch um, instruction right here and it's just going to end the block. It's gonna end this whole load sample block um, and it's gonna you know, not load the last two mils. Um, but I think this is a very clean way to be able to signal it that loading is complete. So now this is one of the places where we could have unintended consequences. So let's say we 
are, you know, we're doing 10 runs in a row, but we're in the third run. So we did a full load of 15 mils, right? So this watch condition was not met. And we're here, we, you know, read through the de um, reset system and we're in the actual desalting phase, right? Well, at that point, when we're moving along here at some random point, an air bubble moves through, like just, you know, because of, because of its buoyancy, moves up into the air sensor and trips it, right? that will signal the end block and it doesn't matter what block you're in it'll just end that block so um you know you could actually end up ending the desalting um block right here um you won't go through 1.25 cvs so the smart move is to um, turn off this watch instruction and to do that we're going to select this watch off so but we're going to do that in the reset system phase And we want it to be for the same instruction, the same signal as this one, which is the um, sample inlet air sensor insert. Okay, so that gets rid of the whole unintended consequences problem. So another place we might want to actually have a watch condition is um, for column equilibration and to signal that the column is completely equilibrated. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to say conductivity is our signal that the column has been equilibrated. And the whole reason I'm doing going through this is because I want to show you that there's this watch parameter section. So for, um, but let's put in the actual watch first. So let's say we have a very long um, column equilibration, it's five total CVs. And you don't need five CVs usually to completely equilibrate a desalting column, especially if you're doing this run over and over and over again. So instead, let's put in the watch condition for watch. The signal is going to be conductivity this time, and the test this time is going to be a stable signal. So what comes up is this minutes. And so right now we have it uh, selected to watch for, you know, the past minute so I don't want to do a full minute. I'm just going to do 0 0.2 minutes, which is what, like 12 seconds. And then the action I'm going to have it do is I'm just going to have it end the block. And this is going to be very similar to, you know, to tell it that sample loading is complete. Insert. And so there's my watch conductivity, right? So I need to put the parameter in. So I'm going to click on the column position, watch parameters, conductivity parameters. And so we're not looking for a peak, so we're just going to ignore that for right now. Um, we're doing the accepted fluctuation plus or minus. So the 0.1 millisiemens per centimeter is what just what the default is. If we hit insert, then this is a pretty tight parameter right here. Right? But, you know, like I said, I don't want to wait that long, so I'm going to say... Uh, two millisiemens. Probably just take, probably be really fast. Um, insert. So there we go. Oh, I have two of them in there, so I'm going to delete the other one. Just trying to do like an example. Okay, so two millisiemen accepted fluctuation. So that's probably going to happen really fast. Probably inside of the first, you know, the first acceptable 12 seconds that we're, we're watching the conductivity. All right. So then I just wanted to show you one other example, which is we want to signal that something happens. So, you know, each time we open up the column, the pressure goes up a little bit, um, you know, so I'm going to have a message up here. So watch and we're going to do pressure, system pressure. And then the test is going to be greater than and the value is going to be 0 0.2 let's say two megapascals. And the action is going to be message. And then this is going to make a block. All right. So then watch system. And then we're going to say that we want it to do an other instruction right here. And we're going to have it put in a message. So this message is going to appear on screen. I'm just going to hit insert and then save and we're done.
Now that we've got all the watch instructions in the method, let's see how well they work by doing a run. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope this helps with your purifications.